everyone else just tries way too hard to sound intimidating that just comes intimidating. off as natural and forced. All of the other villains in this show have the exact same problems as Vendetta from Making Fiends. <laughs> where they all force in their accents, except this show does this even worse because this problem applies to multiple villains and not just one. Bending faces? I, thought, I think it's even worse than Angelina and Anaconda. Not only grating they sound, but also... For a good majority of the series, they are always the villains in every episode, making them overstay their welcome to a point where it becomes a breath of fresh air when the other villains get the spotlight. They had potential to be entertaining villains, but they just became extremely obnoxious because of their obnoxious. voices. Obnoxious. Similarly to Whitey from Eight Crazy Nights. And they Eight Crazy, I'm not Eight Crazy Nights, the movie? For obvious reasons. Bjorn is not any better. The voice actor for him tried so hard to emphasize the fact that he's snooty that it just makes him very obnoxious. Obnoxious. Cosgrove is pretty much the same. The voice actor tried so hard to come off as mysterious and so much of a detective that it just comes off as really forced. And with <laughs> Klaus von Affenkugel, Klaus von Affenkugel. there's no other way around this. They are literally the exact same characters as Dr. Kamikaze and Constantine, and they are not subtle about it whatsoever. As Ludwig is literally Constantine, except he doesn't talk, and Klaus von Affenkugel is Dr. Affenkugel. I think you pronounced it. There are some episodes where these four unite to catch a robot boy. While I'm glad that Ludwig doesn't talk, Klaus von Affenkugel does. And he sounds just as awful as the other villain. I think they were trying to have him do an impression of Peter Lore, but he just Peter Lore the same mannerisms as him, so he just ends up sounding very scratchy as opposed to having charm. So to put it bluntly, the voice acting of these guys range from either being ear-piercingly annoying to stereotypically racist to having really <laughs> bad accents with broken English or to just be flat-out strange. As for the animation, since we get to talk about that, what do I think about the animation? Well, I'll give it this. It's better than the animation in other shows I reviewed and will review so far, like the Tom and Jerry comedy show, Thundercats Roar, and even Camp Coral, as well as Kuku Harajuku. Kuku Harajuku? Kuku Harajuku? Seasons 2 and 3. But that's the most that I can really say about the animation in this show. Don't get me wrong, there are some positives that I could say about the animation, such as how colorful it is. On paper, the character designs do look pretty good, and the action sequences are awesome, even though that transformation sequence with Robot Boy does get old very fast. My problem with the animation in this show is a similar problem I have with the animation in Ollie's pack. Some aspects are well done, but the rest of it is really bland. Particularly the color choices. Most of it is either white. It has a similar issue as Teen Titans Go, which is used also visually. In terms of the backgrounds, looking pretty blocky and basic. And while the character designs in this show do look good, at points they can look way too similar to something like Dexter's Laboratory or Fairly Odd Parents. And this show has some of the laziest excuses for crowd shots that I've ever seen, to the point where it makes me question, was this for budget reasons? I mean, this show doesn't really <laughs> was this, feel like it should was be Was this for budget reasons? Because the character designs do look simple, and not much really happens in this show until the action kicks in. Or was it due to the action sequences? I have no idea. But when they do have a shot of the crowd, it's so obvious that all they had to do was add in a simple background and just put circles around it. And sometimes they would even copy and paste the same exact crowd shot with different colors. I mean, just look at these shots. This is the crowd from Robot Walk. And now here is the crowd from Robo Olympics. Yeah, you're not fully <laughs> I know that drawing characters can be time consuming. I should know because I'm an artist myself, but could they have not tried to come up with background extras or put together a group of people to design? I'm an artist them? too, I mean, but a bug's life was able to do that, and that a was bug's in CGI. Life. However, the absolute worst example in this regard is once again the episode that I mentioned a little bit ago, The Curse of Truckenstein, because of this baffling shot right here that is constantly showing at the beginning and at other points in the episode. It's so obvious that all they I usually draw the characters in the form of Milo, Pony, Friendship is Magic, or sometimes in anime form. 
with the fact that they constantly use that transformation sequence with Robot Boy, and in the episode Wrestling with Gus, there were certain moments where it switched over to Flash animation out of nowhere, when not many exciting things even happen in this show anyway. And these things where nothing happens, happens in certain episodes to begin with. And this was a show that was done in hand-drawn animation for the record. Hand-drawn animation. The that was brought up about this show. People like Mr. Enner thought that it was Flash animated when it's actually Oh, animated, animated atrocities did a review for Robot Boy? Flash animation, it was extremely jarring. And I don't think that <laughs> this show should be that expensive to make, considering the very simple designs. And around the time that this show was airing, other similarly simple design shows did put their all into the extra elements of the animation. Fairly Odd Parents was able to do that. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends was able to do that. Why couldn't this show do that? Did that transformation sequence with Robot Boy take up most of the animation budget? Well, that can't be the case, considering the fact that the same animation is used in every episode. If you ask me, Sean, they just simply don't give a sh**. <laughs> and the last critique for this show, before we get to some of the things that we like Industrial about Park show, from SpongeBob SquarePants oh, Battle for Brick for Bikini Bottom, the I'm not video game. Sugarcoat anything. The humor in the show sugarcoat. is absolutely horrendous. It's very coincidental horrendous. that throughout this review, I've been comparing this show to Ollie's Pack, which was a show that, in one part, I compared to Monster Family, otherwise known Monster as Monster Family Movie. Family. Because this show's idea of humor is directly on par with that movie. The jokes in this show are completely non existent, to the point where it feels <laughs> like this show isn't even trying to be funny. Nothing made me laugh whatsoever. And whenever the show does make an attempt to make you laugh, every single joke that they try to go for feels like they were thought up in a few seconds because they thought of some of the most overused jokes imaginable. For example, ha 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 ha, look at Constantine being oblivious towards the fact that Kevin Cos is being strangled by a snake. Was that supposed to be funny because I'm not laughing? And the jokes in particular are so unenergized and draggy that they just <laughs> unenergized and draggy. That or they go face on the ground. The bottom of the barrel humor you could possibly imagine. I ain't kidding you when I say that. Starting from the episodes Metal Monster and Roughing It, a good seventy-five percent of this show revolves entirely. Seventy-five percent for context in a sequence in this episode. About the average gross out humor, like characters farting or whatever. This show in particular goes for the most extreme form of gross out imaginable, to the point where, I'm not even joking, I think that the original Ren and Stimpy has more dignity than this show. I know that there's <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. Land where Gus constantly gets car sick and throws up a lot, but there are so many other examples of how bad this show can get with its gross out. I'm not even kidding when I say that the episode Roughing It has two gross out moments in a row. It's like they're deliberately trying to mock us while disgusting the people watching this show. So they decide to give us some disgusting humor to rub it in our faces. That leads me into speculating that it suspiciously feels as if this show is deliberately trying to make me and others cringe. And considering a lot of the other triggering and anger inducing aspects of this show- Up all your friends so we could- Meh, it wouldn't surprise me. You the call that- the episode foot brawl you're a terrible friend Gus covered in what's in a porta potty and consider porta potty what is in a porta potty you guys probably know what I'm talking about and the worst example of them all Robo monkey shines which is another Robo one monkey of my shines. Least favorite episodes of the show because of the fact that it's the most disgusting Dwight literally has an entire trailer full of poop that the episode goes <laughs> way too far with a trailer that full of poop the show's animation is an extreme manure because on screen, it doesn't look that gross, but in context with the characters saying what these things are, I would cringe while watching as opposed to feeling queasy. And also, this is a question that I have for the episode in particular, even when I initially watched the episode when marathoning it in preparations for this review. Tommy, why did you think that using the chip from Donnie's old computer was a good idea? You know exactly the kind of person that Donnie is. He was going to look up things to prank people with. Remember? Dr. Mishimo thought it was a great idea to give that kid a job to take care of Robot Boy without any questions whatsoever. The show is like a never-ending spiral of complete stupidity. There's also the stupidity. series finale, which we'll be getting to in a little bit. In another quarter of the gross-out, when it isn't using actual poop or barf, 
They're basically using material that would make you feel unclean, as in most of what is shown in this show feels extremely fetishy. Small Problems literally has an advertisement in its own universe that allows Jelly kids squinter. to cover themselves in their favorite jello flavors. Ew! Ew. Episodes, Covering themselves in jello flavor? You really gotta something. take a bath for that. That's gross. Mud throughout most of the episodes that just becomes kind of uncomfortable to watch like you're watching someone's fetishes on screen and the other 25% of the show's 25% I kid you not just watching characters farting on screen and they have absolutely no I don't have any whatsoever. images of and any of these moments considering the fact that most episodes have Gus laughing at the fact that he farted making Tommy and Lola become repulsed by him doing that and one episode called <laughs> ooh that smell is an episode that consists of nothing but fart and poop jokes that what I described with how fart and poop jokes of the I think family guy got the most of entirely encapsulated episodes got the episode. most of them these people have issues seriously huge concerning issues and here and there, this show does try to throw in humor for the adults, similarly to a lot of other cartoons from the time period that this show came out. But, uh, Kip Laszlo, this show was Billy and Mandy, written, and it doesn't know how to properly execute jokes to make them land. The adult jokes that they try to do in this show is not very good. They aren't properly thought out, and they are incredibly unsubtle, to a point where when it gets to each joke where they try to throw in something for the adults, you can see what this joke is implying all over it so is April. there anything you like about this series Sean? well as i said with the animation there are some positives that i do have with that debbie turnbull is somewhat of a likable character and there are some episodes that i do like like the episodes comma spazi and chop comma spazi and chop i'm having a really hard time thinking about anything i really liked about this show as stated before Every single aspect of this show feels like it was specifically trying to aggravate me and many other people that have a low tolerance for these things. The absolute scumminess that is the way that Gus treats Tommy, the ways that this show treats family as if having a brother that beats you up and a father that puts the brother on a pedestal and doesn't care about your safety as not being a problem whatsoever, the absolutely inconsistent writing that flip-flops character motivations and its own rules, the absolute uncomfortableness that is this show's disregard towards personal space, the irritating and bland voices, the gross out that can get so bad that it makes you wonder if this show is deliberately trying to make you cringe, and among so many other things, made this show legitimately painful and grinding to sit through. Yeah, even more than sitting through this review. No offense, Sean. And it's not because I went into this show being stressed out or whatever. And even when I got absolutely furious with this show, it didn't affect my enjoyment of other shows. I thought that while I was watching Making Fiends that it was the case. Making Fiends. That's not actually true because after I watched Making Fiends, I watched Puka and preparations for Puka. my review on that. So it's just that this show was actually painful. Okay, anything else? Oh, there's also the series finale to talk about shortly. Though, there must be something that I'm missing, considering the fact that this show has a cult following. Even if I were to a look cult past following. all the severe flaws with this show, this show is still not good. Just like Ollie's pack, even if you were able to scrape off all the problems with this show, this show is extremely boring and bland. It doesn't even have <laughs> boring any aspects bland. so bad that it's good. Nearly Say every single what episode you will. of this show has at least one of these aspects that I listed above, making it absolutely god-awful. Where the only way that makes this show less bad is if you watch this show with someone and point out all the flaws with it, and have a good time with that person. And admittedly, me and you had a blast pointing out all the things that are wrong with two of the episodes, Kindergarten Chaos and Robot Girl. But once again, if you're able to stomach through all of that, there's just nothing here. You know what? An incredibly painful and stupid show with loads of bad characters and disgusting, cringy humor is a surprise that the whole show ended on a huge whimper. Like this. <laughs> oh yeah, before we get on to the final verdict, we might as well talk about the series finale real quick. The final episode of the show is called Mama's Boy. 
basically, this episode revolves around Dr. Kamikaze visiting his mom, and that's basically it. Gus and Tommy do show up in the episode halfway through for a school funding thing, and they do show up at Dr. Kamikaze.